The Doctor is in. Hi guys, it's Dr. Sal from DrSecrets.com. Thank you so much for joining in. Today we're going to take a look at testosterone replacement therapy and your options. So you go to your family doctor, you've been feeling uh, for a few months a little lethargic, lack of libido, uh, not able to push the weights you were accustomed to in the gym. So you go to your doctor and explain your situation. He sends you for a blood test and then calls you back a few weeks later and to your surprise, bum bum, you have low T score. So your problem is low testosterone. So knowing this, what options do you have for treatment? Well, I like to classify it into three, whoops, not four, three broad categories, which I call the three P's. And they are pills, pins or needles, and patches or foams. Now, basically what we're trying to do in testosterone replacement therapy is if you are supposed to be producing a Z quantity of testosterone to maintain normal male body function, but you're only producing uh, X amount of testosterone, what we're trying to do is fill that deficit, fill that gap. So we're going to artificially add that difference to what you're naturally producing to get you back up here where you're supposed to be. And there's many different ways, there's many different routes of uh, doing that. So for an example with pills, this is actually an example here of uh, some real ones. These are the pills that you, that you would be taking. And um, one of the advantages of pills obviously is ease of administration. You just take the tablets uh, two or three times a day. Now one of the things you have to consider um, when choosing your options between pills, pins and patches is cost. If you have a drug plan, cost probably is no object, but if you're paying for it out of pocket, it can make a big difference. So with pills, they will typically run you about uh, 50 to $60 a month, depending on um, if you're paying out of pocket, depending on um, what your, your dose actually is. So that's the big advantage with pills. The downside of taking pills is, um, because they pass through your alimentary tract, so you take it by mouth, goes down into your stomach, has to be digested, a large portion of it has to be uh, filtered and dealt with at the liver level. So if you have a problem with your liver or you like to drink heavy or, or, there's, or you have some congenital problem with your liver, um, this probably won't be the best option for you, uh, simply because it would be one more insult for your liver to have to deal with. It's also hard on your kidneys too, so somebody with renal failure again might be an option that's out. So pills is usually most people's first choice because it's so it's relatively inexpensive and it's so easy to take. Another option to consider, um, actually most of my patients usually opt for this one, is pins, taking it by needle form. So an example of that would be um, this one here. This one is Delatestrol. Uh, this is an example of a, a real solution that I would use with, with my patients in clinic. As you can see, it's a typical uh, vacuum sealed bottle. <clears throat> this is one of uh, my favorite options. It's 200 milligrams per mil. Now, uh, in some cases of, of mild um, T level, the individual might just need one mil a month, uh, ranging up to my highest consumer uh, needs five mils a month. This bottle is five mils, but that's unusual. Most people need between one and two uh, mills every three to four weeks. So obviously uh, one thing you might be able to notice here, I don't know if you'd be able to see that well enough on camera, is it's not, it's not water, it's an oily base. Can you see that? It's, it's an oil. So there's two, th two things as a consequence of that. One is uh, because of the infrequency of dosing, which is one of its advantages, with pills you have to take them every day for them to be effective. With this stuff, actually both pills and patches you have to do daily, but with this stuff, you can take the injection and forget about it for three to four weeks before needing another top up. But um, what comes with that territory is that it's what we call a depot. So the oil is injected into your muscle and it stays there in like a little globule and gradually gets um, diffused into the bloodstream. That's how it can last so long from one month to, to the next. So as a consequence of that and being an oil, you can't give it through these little kind of dinky needles that you use for insulin. It has to be given with large bore, large needles, usually about an inch to inch and a half with a large bore like green needle 
or uh, pink needle tops. So uh, one big downside to the injectable is they're literally a pain in the ass, but they have a lot of advantages. One is it doesn't require um, going through the metabolism through your liver, so it completely bypasses any liver problems. Uh, the other advantage, like I said, is you take it, forget about it for a month. Um, one downside to that convenience though is it means you will have to see your doctor once every once every month for administration of the next dose. With the pills, he can provide you a script for three months, six months, a year, and you disappear. But then you have to take it daily. Uh, the other advantage um, that is usually a big draw or pull for a lot of my patients is um, the cost. It is the cheapest method of uh, replacing testosterone. And to illustrate, this bottle here would run you about um, $60. Now, if you were taking the tablets, it would also cost you $60, but that is $60 per month. In this case, this five mils, if you're just on one mil, um, say, per month, uh, this, this $60 is actually going to be across five months. So it's a lot cheaper over the long haul than the tablets or the patches, which I'm going to come to next. Now, I don't have an example with me tonight of a patch. But basically, you can just imagine your mind is basically a small patch, almost like a nicotine patch. But instead of being impregnated with nicotine, it's impregnated with um, testosterone. So the big advantage with the um, patches and foams, with foams, they're, they're coming like a dispenser that you press out and you apply it over the skin and then it absorbs through your skin. So instead of drinking it through your muscle um, or through your alimentary canal, you're drinking it through your skin. And um, with the patches, they have the advantage that they can last for a long period of time before having to switch the patch. And one, one question I often get from uh, patients is um, if, I'm, if I'm using the foam or the patch and I touch my girlfriend or wife, is she suddenly going to start growing a beard? Uh, no, unequivocally not. With the foam, the absorption rate is too quick. Within an hour after you've put it on, it's poof, it's gone. So you can touch anybody. They're not gonna, they're not gonna get it from you. And um, with the patches, the patches is once it's on, it's basically hermetically sealed. So somebody coming to touching the outside, um, they will not get a dose from it. Or if they did, the amount would be so inconsequential as to cause no, no problems. Now, the downside to the uh, foams and patches is uh, they tend to be the most expensive out of the group. So that's why I put here plus, plus, plus. They'll usually run you about $100 per month. But they have the advantages of not requiring um, the digestive tract and liver for metabolism and also not having to see everyone, anyone um, each month for administration of the dose. You basically just give it to yourself so you can, your doctor might give you six months, a year, however much you need. <clears throat> that would be between the two of you. So uh, that, ladies and gentlemen, is um, your testosterone replacement options in a simple nutshell. Again, the, the main things that you're going to be looking at is cost is number one. And number two is ease of administration. How easy is it for you to take it um, on a daily, ba daily or a monthly basis? Oh, and I forgot to mention, um, another question that a lot of people will ask me with testosterone replacement therapy is, are they going to suddenly start looking like a beefcake or a bodybuilding freak? The answer to that question, again, is unequivocally no. And the reason for that is very simple. Um, bodybuilders may use some of these same analogs in their training regimens, but the doses that they use are, are on a cosmological scale, colossal amounts. They, they can easily use 10, 20, 30 times um, what you naturally, sometimes 100 times more than you can naturally produce. When, when we do it in clinic through your uh, physician, what we're trying to do is mimic your natural uh, testosterone levels. So again, using that analogy of the discrepancy in, in levels, if you're supposed to be producing this much and you're producing this much, all we do is fill that gap. We don't exceed the gap. This is what the bodybuilders do. They exceed it and go out to the ceiling. Uh, and that's part of the reason that they suffer so many heinous health consequences. For, for you as the um, patient consumer um, doing this through your doctor, 
you are not going to experience the horrific side effects that you read about in the news or, or see on television because you're mimicking what your body would have naturally produced in the first place. So I hope that puts your mind at ease. So uh, that's it. It's very simple. And uh, that's your options. Thanks so much for watching. And don't forget to subscribe so I can keep you up to date as I upload new videos and share with anybody that you know um, might find this information useful for themselves. Thanks again for watching. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching. Get notified of new videos. Subscribe now.